on the next episode of Sip Suds and Smokes. The Texas beers we'll be tasting today are from Deep Ellum Brewing in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Dallas Blonde Golden Ale and Deep Ellum IPA. From Manhattan Project Beer Company in Dallas, Texas, we have Hoppenheimer West Coast Style oh, IPA <laughs> and Necessary Evil German Style Pilsner. From ETB <laughs> Brewing Company in Tyler, Texas, we have Hitching Post American Amber Ale and Brick Street Blonde Ale. And then from Martin House Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas, we have Box Slider. And from St. Arnold Brewing Company in Houston, Texas, we have Art Car IPA. We'll be right back after this break. Live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Gather around, faithful followers. Here we are for another sud segment where we say there's no use crying over spilled milk. But spilled beer? Oh, that's definitely worth crying over. That's a tragedy. It is. I'm one of your hosts, good old gal Juliana, and joining me today at the table is... Good old girl, Carrie Ann. Hello from long ago. I know. <laughs> How awesome is that? Good old boy, Sparky. Greetings. I uh, groomed my eyebrows for today. I, you know, I, I, get, I bet you groom your eyebrows every day, dude. I, I should, yeah. but I don't. I've decided to grow mine out. I'm just going to go for the whole Abe Vigoda? Uh, you got to grow hair where you can I, at this I'm, point. I support know, that. So. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you don't. You don't no. get to choose that sometimes. No. Yeah. Oh, good I'm old saying boy when Dave. you're in my situation, you know, where it stops in some places, you just like out the nose, that. out the oh, yeah. ears. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why I grow out the mustache. So with the nose hair, just sort of blend mm-hmm. right in, blends it out. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah, I can always smell what I just ate. Oh, you know? we are so lucky. <laughs> yeah. So lucky. Well, recently. Good old boy Dave and I traveled to East Texas. Oof, pray for us. Um, to attend a family. You know, wedding. we probably should have whiskey before every show. I, <laughs> I feel we've just unlocked a new level. The more you drink, the funnier I get. Woo! <laughs> yes. Okay. So, of course, we had to buy some beer and bring it back, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't leave That's anywhere empty handed. And you have to come home. You're supporting the local economy. <laughs> With alcohol. Yes, yes. we are. Mm-hmm. So while Kilgore, Texas might be known more for oil Earl. than for beer. Earl. That's right. Earl. Got them Earl whales. That's <laughs> correct. We were able to find a few interesting things. Or at least we hope they're <laughs> yeah, interesting we'll things. We'll see. <laughs> well, good boy, Dave. Why don't you give us today's interesting lineup? Sure. The Texas beers we'll be tasting today are... From Deep Ellum Brewing in Dax, uh, Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In Dallas, Texas. Uh, Dallas Blonde Golden Ale and Deep Ellum IPA. Do you know that Deep Ellum is a neighborhood in Dallas? It was actually called Deep Elm, but the people kept saying it wrong, so they changed it to Deep Ellum. That's kind of like Shovel. Yeah. And Demombrian. That's right. 
Lebanon. Lebanon. First sales, Kentucky. Yeah. At Vers- yeah. From Manhattan Project Beer Company in Dallas, Texas, we have Hoppenheimer West Coast oh, Style IPA. See what did there. And Necessary Evil, German Style Pilsner. It's the Germans. Hmm. Yes. It's always the Germans that are doing stuff. Is the evil necessary in German From style? From ETB <laughs> Brewing Company in Tyler, Maybe. Texas, we have Hitching Post American Amber Ale and Brick Street Blonde Ale. And then from Martin House Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas, we have Box Slider, which is a traditional German Bach. And from St. Arnold Brewing Company in Houston, Texas, we have Art Car IPA. And if there's time, beyond drinking these eight beers, we may have a bonus beer or two. No. That's uh, kind of a wild card situation. Yeah. Ooh, living on the edge. Okay. I well, like this. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot escape Mike. That's true. <laughs> He's everywhere. Okay. Um, good old boy Sparky, why don't you give us the Suds ratings for today? We'll be discussing and rating these beers with the Suds ratings plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. One, that sucks. Give me anything but a bud. Two, was that a belch? Three, ah, what a relief, and beans don't belong in chili. Four, a body should not make that sound. (laughs) Really? Five, all right, all right, all right. Listen to that hang time. Get me another. That's what I'm talking about. Of course. Was he from Texas? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he he still is. He's got an amazing origin story, too. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's Mm -hmm. a cool guy, man. Okay. Him and uh, Woody Harrelson. Hence the mesquite buffalo. No, wild turkey. Mm Mm-hmm. Mesquite. Oh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Oh, yeah. And Long then Branch. That was what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's a the thing with Woody Hellers- Harrelson. And then is there a thing with Willie Nelson, too? Or are they just friends? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they're... And he's from Texas? They, they travel in the same circles. <laughs> they uh, <laughs> like, he spent time. <laughs> he spent time on Willie's tour bus, but I'm sure okay. they're still just no, friends. No, I just didn't know if, like, Willie's the dad or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> Willie is Matthew McConaughey's father. Yes, it's true. He sired him. Gotcha. So That's, yeah. That would make a lot of sense. It would, but it's not true. <laughs> there are rumors that Woody Harrelson is his half-brother. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. I think they started the rumor. Yeah, that's great. I'm yeah. here for that. Because Woody Harrelson's father is a convicted uh, person uh, of interest. Um, hired killer. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah. I, t- I'm not going to mess with oh, for Woody right. Harrelson. Yeah. That's what I learned today. <laughs> uh, he's a vegan. So, I mean. Oh, well, now I'm back to messing with def- him again. <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take those chances. Wow. Okay. Well, let's get on to the beer, shall we? We probably should at this All right, point. That's that's fair. Okay. So first group is coming from Deep Ellen Brewing in Dallas, Texas. And the first one is the Blonde Golden Ale. Dallas Blonde. Dallas Blonde, yes. That's not a real blonde. It's a special kind of yeah, blonde. Yeah, I was going to say In fact, that's... in the description of the beer, they talk about how it's a town full of... Um, what are they called? Bottled blondes? In a town famous for its bottled blondes, we've reset the bar. Well placed. This shimmering golden ale combines citrusy and floral American hops with pale Vienna and wheat malts. It's I always, beautifully balanced, and yeah. it's 5.2% ABV. I always thought it was weird when you see shows about Texas, like or like the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders and stuff, and they're all like really brightly blonde. I'm like, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah, a lot of blondes in Texas. Pretty, pretty homogenous. Isn't it like yeah. the higher the blonde, the closer to God? <laughs> <laughs> that's the higher the hair do, the closer. Oh, to God. So yeah, yeah. same, same, same. Yeah. That's that's the Aquanet talking. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a hell of a marketing strategy, though. I mean, really. You're welcome, Aquanet. You're gonna you're gonna make it back, and it's because yeah. of us. That's right. Yes. Yeah, that and Mary Kay, right? Yeah. Totally. <gasps> She's from Texas. Yeah. Right. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is that the one with the pink car? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pink. She always had the pink Cadillac. Yeah. Yes. One of the original pyramid schemes. That's true. <gasps> How dare you? MLM, baby. Let's go. <laughs> uh, mazel tough. Okay. So I'm going to admit golden blondes. I mean, blonde ales. I, I kind of tend to stay away from because Same. I'm like, they're meh. Right, they they are designed. They can be meh. They're designed specifically to be meh. Like I don't yeah. have the technology or or equipment or time to make a lager. So let's go with right. the golden well, blonde. But right? I th- I think there's there's some value in that though. There right? is there is like you've run a race. You need to be replenished. This is great. Or it's like, like beer. 105 yeah. degrees outside. A golden blonde is going to save my life right now. Well, it's like you, <laughs> you know if you want to. Yeah, she is prior. <laughs> Prior to every brewery coming back in craft brewery and making a lager, you know, Pilsner or, you know, light check lager or something, the golden or blonde ale was the way you would get your uh, Bud Light friends to come in to the craft brewery and hang out with you. Come to the dark side. Because then they're like, ah, you know, this, all these IPAs, I hate all these hops. Right, right. They don't want anything complicated. Like, oh, you want a Miller Lite or whatever? Here, there's a Golden Blonde. It's not even remotely the same, but here, it's just going to satisfy you. But but there's still a lot of good stuff in that space, in my opinion. No, I agree. Yeah. But I, I think this is a nice, easy drinking blonde ale. Yeah, it's not going to win any badges or anything like that, but it's also not going to kill anybody. It's like most blondes I've known. Yeah, it's not too deep, but... Easy blondes are my yeah. category. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, as far yeah. as blondes go, this isn't bad. We're going to rate it a three. Good start, Deep Ellum. Woohoo. Okay, now let's go to the IPA. Now, I believe, From Deep Ellum. I believe this is their, well, it's got their name on it, so it's probably their flagship. And on the nose, I mean, I'm already getting like just, I think this might be an IPA. Hmm. All right. This one's coming in at 7% ABV. Wow. For an, yeah. For an IBA, IPA to bear our hometown name, it better be potent. So we loaded it up with our favorite American hops for a bitter punch. And with some over-the-top tropical fruit, citrus, pine, and floral aromas and flavors, you've got one big Texas IPA serving, deserving of the Deep Ellum name. Now, I have to tell you, this they did this one right. And compared to the blonde, like this, I would not have expected an IPA like this. To be this good? Yeah, to be this good. Yeah. Right. This is... Really solid. It's it's so well balanced between the the upfront hop flavors and then the bitterness the on the back, back end. end. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Got yeah. a little bit of dank, some like pencil shaving, a little bit of woodiness for some reason, and then that fruitiness too. Yeah, yeah. I like this a lot. Man. Yeah, the citrus and pine. It's 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 nice. I, I would love to have some kind of spicy barbecue with this. Like, I need yeah. to like. I need you guys to look away, and I need to just have a half rack of ribs and some alone time with this beer. I would beer. eat some like serious carne asada tacos. Oh, this, man. Yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah, I would skip lunch and have another pint. There you go. I love that. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know what? That's that's been my uh, diet for a while now, and it's working out great. Yeah. Well, we'll be back we'll when we get back. in just a minute with more. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> so today's episode is a. Texas Hold'em. Hold'em. I like it. Texas Roadhouse? <laughs> a fine Speaking chain of restaurants. Of which, you know, not yeah. a lot of people could I host a, a, a podcast <laughs> one-handed. Uh, so, good job, Juliana. Um, hey, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, and, and Texas Roadhouse, I don't know how I feel about the new one. Oh, there's a new version of Texas Roadhouse? Oh, oh it dropped last week. It's all vegan. I... <laughs> Wait, what? What? What's the place? What's the place that has the damn peanuts on the ground? That's like uh, Logan's. Oh, oh, they good don't do Lord. that anymore because allergies. Oh, thank God, because that was like kids I, were just walking in there and just dying. immediately dying. It was the most repellent. Like I'm, I'm a a bit fastidious. That might surprise you guys. Ironically, to me, the peanuts on the floor were not the worst part of that place. Really? Okay, the food was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, and I support that. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, you know, I'm wearing cufflinks. I'm just going to tell you right now, I don't like to walk into places that have peanuts on the floor. Yeah, they probably don't get a lot of guys in bow ties it's walking true. into yeah, that's, Logan's. Yeah, that's, I took that off fair. for you guys. Yeah. That's fair. Um, okay, so right before the break, we were talking about the Deep Ellum IPA from so Deep good. Ellum in Dallas. Yes, and um, just some closing thoughts on it before we rate it. Um, solid every day, kind of interesting. I wouldn't have thought, um, that I would, I don't know why, I guess I'm biased, but I wouldn't have thought I would have liked like a Texas IPA. You know what I mean? Like I just figured that loggers were their thing. Yeah. Which there's nothing wrong with that. No, because (laughs) of their German history and just like the long, long of, of all the breweries. Right. Right. But, but, so I mean the you look at the color, I mean everything about this is just just right where it needs to be. Nice yeah. West Coast. The longer it sits here, it's like pineapple rind is coming up for me. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, that's why you get whiskey people onto a beer ship. They, <laughs> they bring mm-hmm. they bring that no, extra you're level. Right though. Yeah, that is a really neat aroma. But really, I mean, this this is just, to me, like, waiting for the food that pairs with it. Yeah. Like, this is, yes. Yes, so much. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, we are going to rate the Deep LM IPA a four. Oh, I thought uh, we were saying. Uh, thank you, Deep uh, L. Um, How do you say Elm, but you say it in such a jacked up way, it's Elm. You're Southern. You know, uh, <laughs> George Carlin had a great line about Big that, deal. but I cannot repeat it on the radio. But I'll be <laughs> sorry to tell you. Just, just huh. Google it, everybody. Yeah, Google it, folks. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to go to the Manhattan Project Beer Company, also in Dallas. And we're going to talk about Ooh. the Hoppenheimer West Coast Style IPA. 7.4% ABV. This beer was created for the IPA lovers out there. It is a perfectly balanced West Coast American IPA with huge dank hop aroma. At first sniff, you will detect pine, resin, and delicious citrus. Once you finally steal a sip, you will discover that Hoppenheimer is just enough malt and subtle caramel to keep the IPA characteristics in balance. On the nose, I'm just getting so much sweetness. Like, there's... yeah. I don't really get what they said, and I don't know no. if it's because we're just coming off that deep ellum, or it's maybe too cold. But but maybe. definitely, it's it's, it's got, a lot brighter than that description. Yeah, it's it's got like a candied fruit on the front end, like taste to me. But then on Guess, the back end, it's got a nice bitterness. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely the candy fruit piece going on, and I'm definitely sm- bitterness on the. End. I'm smelling like first running malt kind of stuff. Am mm, I, you know what yeah. I mean? Totally know what you the mean. The sugars. Yeah. Wow. There's a lot of sugars. Hey, sugar. By the way, did everybody see Oppenheimer last Oh, week? yeah. Man, that good was good. Good grief, man. What? We actually did. I an- saw Barbie three times. I, I saw Barbie three <laughs> times. We, we did. A- <laughs> you know what? Do you know, Karen? I made some time for Oppenheimer because yeah. it was good. <laughs> wow. It's, it's in my wow. queue. Okay. Well, just, you know, you should really. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, some we, of our social schedules. Julie and I and uh, Reverend Mark and Mike did a Oppenheimer and Barbie episode. Oh. oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. It was. I support yeah. that. Yeah. I, um, look. I did, I did Barbie. I also did Oppenheimer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't and want to I talk about watched, your past. Like, okay. I also... Stop name dropping all the time, Sparky. The, uh, the Taylor Swift like full movie thing. Oh, too. movie yeah. thing. The yeah. Ares oh. tour. The Ares tour, because my, my wife and daughter got to go there. I'm a bigger Swiftie than my wife. Now she's converted. I'm sorry. Um, she's converted to Swiftieism? She has, <laughs> man. And, uh, and, and Zoe, my daughter, was like, you've dead. We can't be friends anymore unless you watch three and a half hours. Of, <laughs> and we're going to start it at 1130 oh. at night. And I'm like, oh, oh honey, God. I don't know how this is going to work. I mean, she, we're both night owls, so yeah. like, we can pull that off. But, yeah, but still. Oof. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Does that make you a swift cynic? Sw- <laughs> Are you? <laughs> wow. That's amazing. That's, that's great. I need to talk to my rabbi about that. Actually. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You may have to do some sort of exorcism or <laughs> I don't know what the Jewish equivalent of that okay, is. Okay, so let's 
talk about hey. Hoppenheimer. The Hoppenheimer. Oh, whoops. <laughs> See? It's contagious. It is. It is. Carrie Ann, I've never done that in all the, all the years. You, it's like we've introduced a, a, a viral contagion to this wow. whole situation. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. I like this a lot. You do really? I do. This okay. Was, okay. Mm-hmm. The Hoppenheimer. Okay. So Hoppenheimer. the thing is, is like I'm not getting any pine, right? Or getting None all the sweetness. But then, as you taste it, you're getting like the forest floor kind of thing. Oh yes. The dankness. Yeah. yeah. As it warms up, yeah. there's a little more resin that comes out. Just very interesting. I, you know, I wonder if they made this for the movie. I assume they probably did. Um, I don't know. I don't know because their whole theme is is, nuclear, nuclear. is blowing stuff up. (laughs) Nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. (laughs) It's Texas, so you have to say necessary evil. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they have they have like a they have like a half life beer and a fat man and a little boy and oh, so it's like pure oh everything is yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like because they I think because they're experimental, they're scientific and collaborative. And and if you think about the Oppenheimer movie and the Manhattan Project, they brought a lot of different scientists from you know, a lot of different areas and they all work together in New Mexico and, and- and they say you can drink this all afternoon, but I mean, I, I don't feel think like seven point so, four. That's you're. I don't. You, you no, can I don't. drink it all afternoon, sure. but you're going to be on the f- the the floor, yeah. at some point, yes, yeah. with a straw, yeah, with the peanuts, yeah, yes. There you go, and the allergies, See? yes. Okay, we are going to rate the Hoppenheimer West Coast IPA from Manhattan Project Beer Company a three. Oh. Four? Point one. No, I'm saying four, dude. Okay, four okay. it is. Four, four it is. I, I agree. We've With never changed ratings going. mid. Wow. Mid belt. This is a. We're just going off the episode. rails today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Okay. Yep. I think it's time for story time. Oh my gosh, that's so strange, Juliana, because I have a story to share. Do you this. have a story? I do. How I do. Did that work out? Well. I mean, Please tell us a story. I've been thinking about this all week, and Papa. I just kind of bring this to you. So, Papa, read us um, a story. Pages, picture pages. Fill your days with picture pages. Let's get Time out your to crayons watch and your pencils. Bill Cosby, do a oh. picture page with you. Was, was that? It was oh. Bill oh, Cosby. No. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Ooh. Don't don't eat don't, that. Don't drink don't eat that pudding pop. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's going like to be my stage name. I'm sorry I ruined our childhoods wow. today. I'm really sorry really? about that. Pudding pop. Cool. All right. Damn. Well, don't eat the jello. On a less roofy note, <laughs> my story is about a woman who ordered a $275 Ooh. ashtray, but instead received, wouldn't you know it, a can of tuna instead. What? From Bill Cosby. A can of tuna. <laughs> Yes, don't eat that tuna can. Um, (laughs) Bailey Comier just wanted to splurge on a little online luxury, but what she was sent was much more than a little fishy. (laughs) (laughs) And a now viral TikTok video, Comier, (laughs) a Nashville, hey, that's us, area resident, recounted her experience ordering a Dolce & Gabbana ashtray from luxury retailer Saks Fifth Avenue and receiving something that caught her by surprise, a can of tuna. (laughs) Get it? Caught her. (laughs) Is that wild caught or farm raised? I made a TikTok account just so that I could share what just happened to me because I'm most perplexed and confused I've ever been in my entire life, Komi says. That may not be her affect. No, it but is. That is. That's for exactly this. how she sounds. It's weird. Comie said she received an emailed coupon from a sax for a percentage off one item online and decided to purchase a Dolce & Gabbana Blue Mediterranean Ashtray, which retails on the sax website for two seventy five. I don't need to hear the judgment. That's what I wanted. So that's what I picked. <laughs> it's very pretty. <laughs> Seriously. It should have been very pretty, she says. After Comier's order was delivered, she says she ordered, opened her Saks branded package, pulled out a black Dolce & Gabbana box, and removed the cellophane wrapping. When I opened it, 
This is what I found. A can of albacore tuna, Komie says. Mm. Oh my God, baby. I don't know if someone from the warehouse took it and replaced it with some cellophane with a hair dryer. I don't even know, but this is the most effing expensive can of tuna I ever bought. <laughs> I hope that's what we named this episode. The effing most effing can expensive can of tuna. Comier's video has garnered more than 1.3 million views and commentators empathized with their plight, sharing their own experiences with the online retail return scams. Sack sends me a used perfume, paid $450. They don't accept used perfume for returns, supposedly, wrote one TikTok user. My daughter bought a $500 bag, commented another. When she received, the box was carefully sliced in a different spot, and the bag was removed. Sax mail is a target for high-end theft. King Charles, wow. <laughs> Other commentators use the fishy situation as an opportunity to fine-tune <laughs> their comedy stylings. Albacore is the Dolce and Gabbana of the tuna world, wrote one TikTok user. Honey. <laughs> Crack that crown, baby, and empty it out. You got yourself an ashtray, exactly. commented another. Right? Yes. I mean, make do with what you've got. Also, who still smokes? Shut up. Get what I, you get. I, yeah, same. Um, <laughs> for its part, Sex Fifth Avenue says that after an investigation of Comier's order, the team identified that the tuna can center was a fraudulent return. We take our customer experience very seriously. Across the retail industry, there has been an increase in online fraud, particularly related to returns, a Saks Fifth Avenue. Is this Mr. Fifth Avenue? (laughs) Well, I do work for Saks. It could be Mr. Saks. Luxury continues to be a target given to its high price points, and as such, we have implemented a more rigorous step in our return process, including additional reviews and stronger authentication. Our highly automated fulfillment centers manage millions of shipments every year, but it is not acceptable for even a small number of our customers to have this experience. The representative also said that the Saks teams works with Comier to get a replacement or sent. We apologize for any inconvenience, as this is not as reflective as the luxury shopping experience. It's not like they can check which every Saks box Avenue is new. that goes out. She, the rep adds, at first I was looking to buy something silly. I noticed they do sell caviar, so I was like, oh, maybe it got mixed up. Maybe, but this isn't caviar, this is cat tuna, Comier tells today.com, <laughs> adding as though she may have had an innocent mistake before Frank could in. It didn't even occur to me that it could have been a customer doing it until one of my friends said, I've heard of people doing these things with bags. They order real bags, keep the real one, and replace it with a fake one, and they get a refund. And her friend was correct. Fraud, specifically related to returns, is on the rise. According to a survey by APRIS Retail, a national retail federation, retailers estimated that 13.7% of returns were fraudulent in 2003. That's about a $101 billion Jeez. in tuna cans, counterfeit that's... products, and other items showing up. That's, that's a lot of tuna, gang. That is a lot of tuna. Showing up in consumers' packages. During the holiday season, that number rose to 16.5% or $24.5 billion. Billions. With a B. I called the guy and he was actually really nice. His name was Roger. I didn't tell him on the phone. I was scared they'd hang up on me. But so I just said, <laughs> I received the wrong package, Comier explains, adding that Roger asked her to send pictures of the wrong. I'm. He's like, okay. I just got your email, and then it goes quiet, and then it just goes, that's odd. And I'm like, yeah, I know, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. Well, it all worked out in the end. I feel like we've been on a journey together. Yeah. We have. That was that was good. See, that's why, A, that's why people like Audible. Because uh, really uh, good reading skills and voices. <laughs> and also, that's also why people like... Getting their news from the BBC, you know, there's the something yes. so uh, trustworthy about a British person, right? Reading because, the news to you. because when you <laughs> hear when you hear the English language spoken in the received pronunciation dialect, it's got to be authoritative and correct, right? right. Yes, not yes. the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Facts. Well done. Okay, so first of all, yeah, yeah, we're back in that back. Were we going to actually use this two hundred seventy five dollar ashtray to put? ashes in no she put it and her if jewelry. so ask yourself a question <laughs> let me ask you something 
Isn't a bite of tuna better? I think so. I mean, a, a I feel like it's ironic, tuna. but like still relevant. And she yeah. still has an ashtray if she really needed one, yeah. which I hope she does. And it's a great it's story. And she Why could is, have eaten the tuna. She could have. I would have eaten out. the tuna, yeah. returned the can. Yeah. You sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't let that go to waste. That's Mm-mm. good. That's albacore. You don't throw no. albacore. Was it packed in water or oil? Oil. Oh, oh yeah. I think it's oil. Yeah. Okay. Like this, like fine mm-hmm. olive oil. That's uh, that's classy. So quick yeah, Texas story. I mean, it was from Sacramento. Yes. Yeah. Uh-oh. Quick, yes, please. Quick Texas story. So my my mamma, Nolita Marie Bunn. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Nolita. 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 She grew up in Texas as the youngest of fifteen kids. How many? Fifteen kids. I, Children. Wow. I don't know about her mom, but One I have mother. some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she slid right out. You know, it's like it's true. <laughs> what was her birth order? She was the fifteenth of. Oh. Yeah, she was the last. But her eighth, that says ninth, and about tenth. Nolita. It's yeah, like riding true. a like riding a water slide, man. Just, yeah, she was just like yeah. there. Were, there was already like an inflatable raft that she just like <laughs> right out. Oh, Didn't yeah. even interrupt yeah. her grocery checkout. Yeah. So yeah. so her her Wait, eighth, was- ninth, and tenth siblings were all girls named sequentially Ada, Nina. <laughs> And Tenny. Well, you know no. what though. But here's the here's the deal. Mm-hmm. After I seven, can't. you know, names you're you're gonna start to run out of names. Well, they yeah. they started seen? naming people after Texas towns after eight and nine and Tenny. There's Odessa. There's Katie. Yeah, I'm surprised there was not a. Uh, there was probably the they were probably just driving around and what uh, Kilgore. Kilgore. Kil- I'm surprised there wasn't a Kilgore. Frankly, yeah, it should have been a son named. If Kilgore. we can keep coming up for. All these beers to have these names. I think we can do better than eight and nine and ten. I feel that's tenna, the case. Tenna, eight and nine. Wow. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. That's, I, this, there you go. And what? Okay. Were they German? Were they like? What were they? They were very Texan. happily married. It sounds <laughs> like. <Texan. laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, like. <sighs> Ethnically, where did they like? They were bored. No, because I mean, <laughs> well, apparently they only had one hobby. So yeah, oh. <laughs> but they were apparently good at it. Right? Like, well, and good and good for that. No, but I mean, like you know, normally, like you come, you have names that you go through, like family and, names and stuff. Yeah, they burned through those pretty quick. I, get, I guess like. they did. Wow. Well, we've That's... got a Jeff. We've got a Steve. Uh, you know, Carol. Ada, you know, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. That's, right. um... Well, what's this next beer? Okay. Oh. Well, we will get to the beer after this brief interlude. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. So good old boy Dave and I went to Texas and we brought some beer back. And yeah. today's episode is talking about some Texas beer. All right. We got to talk about some beers and some crazy tuna and names. Yes. There's that. Okay. So moving on, we are going to go to the Necessary Evil German Style Pilsner from Manhattan Project Beer it, Company in Dallas. So oh I saw God, this, this side group message when I uh, ended up on this show, and they were like, "She's a Necessary Evil." So I feel very honored you got a beer yeah, yeah. named yeah. after me for this one. Well, well, there you go. Serendipity. Okay, five point three percent ABV. Necessary Evil entertains the palate without fatiguing it. At first sip, you will detect a hint of floral character and immediately tells you that this is not your ordinary pills. And this is delicious, guys. Have, mm. you, have you had a sip yet? Yeah. I did. It's, I had all the, I actually drank all mine. So. No. Well, yeah. But it I'll was take good. you back there. Yeah. What'd you think? Oh, it's so nice. Yeah. The floral notes. Every like that's just kind of like a bonus, right? Like this is just a great after the last building. couple of beers, the big IPAs and stuff. Having something like that really is a nice palate cleanse. Wonderful, yeah. yeah. Palate cleanse, Marigold. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Ooh, mm. Nice whiskey. Girl. Look at this girl. Yeah, See, girl. That's what I'm talking about. I don't all get the marigold and whiskey. There's all the fun things over but here. But then, like at the very end, there's this just nice, perfect biscuity, just kind of grain. Mm. That's exactly what you want from a pills. Ends it up. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just as it should be. Yeah. No fuss, oh, no muss. Well, yeah. But, just. Yeah. But they. Th- yeah, perfect. We're going to go with a solid four on this one. Uh, 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 right. Okay. Moving on. We're going to go to ETX Brewing Company in 
Tyler. I bet it's East Texas. Texas. But I'm not going <laughs> to. Oh, you're going to ruin it for all of us. That's kind of what I do. Okay. Going with the Brick Street, or no, sorry, the Hitching Post <laughs> American Amber Ale. I don't know which can I have. Ah. Okay. I'm still um, enjoying the evil. <laughs> Never stop enjoying that evil. So evil. the Hitching Post American Amber Ale is 5.1% ABV. Medium body, easy drinking amber ale. I, what do you guys think about Ambers? Ambers can be tough, you know? I'm getting next to nothing on the nose here. Yeah. 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 No. yeah. Nothing. It's, it's pretty cold. Hmm? No, not cold. Kind of sweet. Kind of sweet, yeah. A little biscuity. Yeah. Just enough biscuity, hop caramely. to... Yeah. Just yeah. enough hop to make it finish. <laughs> she said... <laughs> 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 You're, you're funny. You're really funny. I like you. <laughs> so, yeah, as, so that's as, fine. Yeah. As, as far as Ambers go, I mean, this is. Well, Ambers died out. You know, like, think about Fat Tire. No. Because oh, a, lot, a lot of people. No. Yeah. Well, a lot of people just really weren't drinking Ambers because it's not an IPA. Which the hopheads love, but then it's also not like a clean pilsner or lager. Which yeah, it's kind of like this you know. misfit toy. So it's and it's not a stout or a big barrel age, whatever. So it's just sort of this thing that got. Are caught we going to name middle. all the things it's not? Yes, <laughs> yes. It's not Carrie Ann. All right. It's not whiskey. It's Have you ever sparky. had the Nashville uh, Nashville Brewing Company Amber? No, it's solid as heck. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Is it? It's, cool. And I'm glad they're making it. Um. You know, we said more than on the shelf. But I have the amber they have on draft at all the Mexican restaurants. That's the end of my story. Okay. No, right. no, no. But <laughs> all the Mexican restaurants. All, all the guess. Mexican restaurants. All <laughs> they all have that one amber. Well, know? it does. It does culinary from a culinary standpoint. It does tend to pair well. Sure. With, with food, I mean, like browns yeah. and ambers are really what you want to go with. Um, yeah. In most cases, to sure. support and not get in the way of. It doesn't get in the way of the flavors. Kind of uh, kind of cool some of the uh, spiciness. And yeah. I feel like nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Not exciting. Okay. Kind of want delicious. some queso right now. but There. You know. Yeah, right. right. But we can't. Okay. So this is going to be a three. The Hitching Post American Amber Ale from ET. Well, you could hitch yourself right up to it. They're a brew pub, too. I bet they have some decent food to pair with this. Yeah, they I probably bet they have do. a hitch too. <laughs> it's true. Uh, okay. Let's see what you did there. Next up will be the Brick Street Blonde. So, another blonde ale. This one is 5.2% ABV, light crisp and lightly hop with mild maltiness. They're calling it a classic American blonde. I, I would, call myself a classic American blonde, but here I am with red hair. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Mm. This is a nice palette cleanser. cleanser. I think I like this one better than the Dallas blonde. Oh, okay. You, are you? Are you? No, I don't disagree. No, 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 no. I don't disagree. I, I just forgot that we had that one earlier. Ah, see, that's <laughs> yeah. how we. That's how we know. Maybe it's better. I don't know. Mm. Um. But again, another light. Easy, non-offensive, everyday kind of thing. Right? Every day, that's what I strive for. Every day, light yes. and non-offensive. Yeah, <laughs> that's my goals. Right. Agree no. to disagree. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in comparison with the other one, I think this is just a little. Hmm. I don't know. A little softer. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. That makes perfect sense. Less interesting. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I'm more inclined to think that the Deep Ellum I like better than this. <gasps> what? You son of a... Mm. Yeah. Fine. What I do you guys... Know. All right, we're rating it a three. Peace. Uh, two. Oh, a two. Oh, you sons of... Yep, so uh, the Sparky Brook Street Blonde, me. we're going to rate a two. I'm sorry, I'll make it up to you. It's okay. Sweet, sweet loving. Now, let's I'll go... Like this. Okay, let's go to Fort Worth 
And let's go to the Martin House Brewing Company. We're going to talk about their Bach slider. So something slightly different. And now for something completely different. Exactly. 5.6% ABV. Bach slider is the official beer of Fort Worth's own toadies. I don't know. What is that? What does that mean? That's the uh, Possum Kingdom. Was that the song? Uh, what? What? That, their <laughs> song. The Sprocket? No. <laughs> the Toadies. Their song was Possum Kingdom. Oh, okay. I, I, I can't sing it because of copyright issues and I suck at singing, but look Did it up. Did you just make up both it's the band. band and the song? It's a band. Uh, I okay. promise, from the 90s. Okay. Oh. Maybe, maybe the aughts. Ooh. So this is an easy-drinking, copper-colored, lightly hot beer, perfect for on-stage, backstage, no There's no copper in this color. your rock music <laughs> takes you. So oh. yes, he might be right with the band called the Toadies. Toadies. If this is copper... Yeah, I'm colorblind okay. to red, and so I'm, I'm just going to go to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How can you be a cherry whore and be colorblind to red? I, I have magic glasses that help me see colors, Yeah, but I really love the flavor of cherry. Mm. This is delicious. Yeah, so I like this because it actually lends itself to the uh, the German brewing tradition yes, of Texas. Totally. Yeah. And it is... It's chocolatey. It is chocolatey, it is so but it is like, yes, this is... Oh, oh. this is... Yeah. Delightful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is really nice. Dessert. This might be the beer of the show so far. Or... I no question about it. Yeah. No question about it. This is delicious and makes me it's happy. It's kind of nutty, a little roasty, chocolatey. This is the beer the I want for a back for a whiskey. Oh. oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we know what she would pair it with. I what would. about you, Sparky? What would you pair this with? I'm going back to food, man. I mean, I I feel like if you are you saying whiskey isn't food? It it is. Whiskey is life. I it's it's a meal in a glass. It's corn. Yeah, pretty much. But no, for me this would be like some just perfect brisket. I would mm. have this with some perfect brisket, a little bit spicy, not sauced. Oh my god. Or or pastrami. Oh my god. Oh, there we I'm, go. I'm, I've been making a lot of pastrami recently. <laughs> The guy makes his own pastrami. It's it true. Is. Oh, this is, yeah, this is really nice. And I get like a little bit of smoke at the end. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah. And I just, and I like, it's not a lingering smoke. No. But just enough to finish it, so to speak. Kind of, kind of a suggestion of. Yeah. I love that. Mm. I love that. That is exactly oh, this right. This is yum. This is really yum. I really yeah. enjoyed this beer. <clears throat> yeah. This is I'm wow. incredibly impressed by this I, place. I know. All I can think about is what whiskey I want to drink with it. What whiskey, what whiskey would you would want you to drink, drink with it? it? Would you go for something smoky to kind of pair with that? Or like no, how would that work? No, okay. No, Where no. would you go? I'm just go looking at what we have. No. Mm-mm. Okay. I would go high rye. Okay. Because oh. that's spicy. And then this yeah. gives that chocolate malty like. Mm. This is where you land. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'd that probably might... go like classic Four Roses single barrel with this. Wow. This might okay. be an episode we have to do. Carry yes. Beer and whiskey the, the whiskey bag. Oh, that's the my whiskey whole back life. episode. I, yeah. I have to yes. have yes. beer with my whiskey. Can we do a pickle okay. back episode? Cause Zero. <laughs> <laughs> We were there. We like we were so there, and then, and then Spark- Sparky broke things. Just oh, broke it over. kind of my job. Sangria. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, Reverend Mark from saying the words it. of Reverend Mark. <laughs> yeah. yes. no. from the pulpit. Oh. <laughs> and like, and I, I know German influence of Texas. Sure, that makes sense. But I guess my little pea brain was thinking that you would always go with lighter beers in Texas just because of the heat and the weather. No. I know, I know, and apparently not. But um, they love stouts in Jamaica, so. Yeah, yeah I'm fair. just saying. I'm I just mean, saying. Bach, Bach beer is just like a Texas, period. So Because it's still a really yeah. light-bodied beer. Shiner like yeah, I mean, my fair. God. I mean, yeah. it's like well, a... Well, yeah. Right? Okay. Like, that's yeah. a national pastime. That's a thing, yeah. That's Although, thing. I would say... I would I would take this, this over this, the this, shiner. Yeah, yeah. 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 shiner I'm fixing to have to excuse myself because that old Fitz bottled in bond I feel like might Is be calling in you. love with this beer. Okay. Well, there's only one way to find out. Yes. Well, you can reach it. <laughs> just just stretch out. Just right there. All right. Just right there. Okay. Love. We're gonna say a five or a yeah. five. Yes, we're gonna say Man. a five. 
Hey, I just want to say thank you, Martin House. Yes. Wow. You guys just saved America. Yeah, right. Y'all, y'all did it right. It's just delicious. Yes, true. it really is. Okay, last but certainly not least, maybe, we're going to go to St. Arnold Brewing Company in Houston, Texas, and we are going to do the Art Car IPA. I just smelled this, and it's an IPA. Yep, 7.2% ABV. It's an American IPA featuring a blend of both new and old hop varieties from the Pacific Northwest. The nose is a blend of apricot and tropical fruit and mango. The taste starts with a big, bitter blood orange that morphs into mangoes and sweet tropical fruits. Okay, so... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The way you navigated the alliteration in that was (laughs) just amazing. Like... You're my hero, Juliana. Like hero? that was a hero. 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 You're my hero. hero. That's how hero. Deep Elm became hero. amazing. Like, that's that exactly incredible. how Deep Elm Since became Deep Elm. Not getting angry. We're gonna go to Shelbyville. Oh, you mean shovel? Yes. <laughs> yes. Big bitter blood orange morphs well, into mangoes. That's I just saying. right. I mean, that's a lot to. Part, right? Unpack, yeah, and then make it, and then the fact that they're calling this American. Do Americans enjoy blood oranges and mangoes? Um, I mean, Italians. I like am American, blood. and I thoroughly <laughs> enjoy okay. both. Yeah, okay. Even though she supports Alabama, roll tide, <laughs> roll tide, mm. roll tide. Mm. Mm. Um. Wow, the aroma on this. I, know. I could just smell this all, all day, day right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're just smelling the juice. I mean, this is, you're smelling the juice. Wait. You're smelling the pits. I just smelled the juice. I'm going to have to save that as a clip. <laughs> wow. No, you just smelled the Jew. Just one Jew. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's singular. Well, I've been around a lot of my people. Oh, so that's true. Well, like, you know, you've kind of probably been rub- rubbing. Yeah. He's rubbed elbows. It's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm not getting mango. I could totally see like the blood, the blood orange, orange piece and, for sure, and the and more like the um, zest of a blood orange. So far, but I don't get the Wait other to the tropicals. End. Wait to the end. It's very astringent at the end. But, it, but if you start sort of like tapping your tongue at the end, then I get that mango, Tap. and it's where I, I know that's. <laughs> I'm not. I'm tasting that, my was finger. That Morse code? I know that sounds. Yeah, yeah. that that sounds weird. But yes, it you felt get weird. past the astringency, and mm-hmm. I don't quite know where that's coming from. But after that, then you get the mango at the finish. The astringency is is really kind of a dry, citrusy, like finish pithy. At the very end. Yeah, like a pithy. pithy. Yeah, very well. Yeah, I got a mouthful of pith. Okay. <laughs> Happens. But that's your. I mean, that's kind of what I meant. That's your love language. That's right. (laughs) Salty. I don't mind this. I don't mind this. You can put that (laughs) on the can. That's what she said. Yeah. I don't. I'm okay. You know, that, that's my real love language. (laughs) I don't mind this. I'll let you do that again. This is delightful. Yeah. We're going to rate this a four. Okay. And because we have some old fits here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great and we idea. have a little bit of the Bach left. Let's do a little chaser. Let's do it. It works. Oh, we... it does. It does. It does. I feel warm and hugged. <laughs> By old fits. Gave her a hug. Old fits always gives me a hug. Oh, you are right. Okay. I never would have thought of putting a Bach after Old Fitz. Yeah, thank mm. God for Carrie Ann. Oh. Right, this okay. is why you need skilled people. <laughs> yes. Around you. Oh, yes. God bless America. Oh my gosh. This, okay, this is like a ten. Thank you. This oh is my a God, this is ten. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to us. I think this was a great episode, and honestly, I'm so glad I, I redeemed myself after a long absence. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So this means you you can't wait so long to come back, <laughs> right? But this was a really cool experiment. It really was. Yeah. Um, and and thank you guys for walking into that beer cooler. Um, okay. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for braving East Texas. Well, 
I'm going to say <sighs> goodbye. Good old gal, Carrie Ann. Thanks so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be back. Straight up 615, y'all. <laughs> yes. Good old boy, Sparky. Thanks for being here. I, I'm glad I took my bow tie off for this episode. Yes, we are too. Yeah. Good old boy, Dave. Hey. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. This is Little Gal Juliana. Keep on chuggling and catch you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're listening to us online, do yourself a favor and tap, Just tap it in. the subscribe button. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. The easiest way to listen to our show is to ask Siri, Alexa, Google, Uncle Larry, or whoever it is that talks to you on your phone. Play podcast Sip, Suds, and Smokes. We love your feedback, and you can reach us at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our tasting notes flow out on Twitter and Instagram with our handle at sipsudsandsmokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands millions and millions of other fans on those social media platforms. Do us a favor. Take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. That's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. Come back, join us for another episode, and keep on sipping. This has been a One Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.